Well, really, I don't know what to name this video because in the concept of the video is actually to, as you can see on my screen, activate the edit piece of this dialogue. And again, we're building a custom dialogue to add items to a uh, Power Apps gallery. So we already in the previous video did the add, so we can add new records. This video, we're gonna be able to modify those existing records. But the key piece to this, and this is the solution strategy behind Power Apps, really focus on the power of a form component compared to individual Power App components. In this video, you're gonna see the difference. I think you're gonna be pretty convinced that the Power App, the form component, has a much better maintenance story than the individual components for this very use case and scenario. Let's get started. Okay, so what we left off in this series was that we were able to, in the previous video, to add a new vehicle for this particular client noting that this is the vehicle that they purchased. So walking through that process quickly, it says do a red model three. Okay, so we got delivery date, February 5th. Um, pick it up from Cleveland and Keelan's going to sell this particular use of the car. And once you click save, everything works as expected. Now, what if entering that information, we selected the incorrect color, notice that it's still prompted me to add a new vehicle and we want to actually edit an existing vehicle. So let's go ahead and talk through what does that mean in Power App Studio? And more importantly, what does that mean from the way that we're structured and the strategy we decided to take with laying out this form? As you know, and I preach this in a lot of my videos, especially with Power Apps, that there was initially some misguided training, let's just put it that way. And part of it was misguided training and a lot of people trying to figure out the tool set. And to be fair, the tool set was not mature enough to do things in a scalable maintenance, uh, maintenance free way. I wouldn't say maintenance free way, but in a maintenance way to have a really compelling maintenance story versus one that's very hindering, meaning that you have to touch one of these components um, and rearrange them and count your pixels and note your pixels, note your width and, and create variables or create fat shadow components to kind of mirror their settings, so on and so forth. So with that, we don't do any of that, right? And we leverage the form component to it, to the max, right? Trying to get as much capabilities out of the form, uh, the form component. Yes, we have to jump through a few hoops to make that to use the form component in many different scenarios, but it's well worth it because of the maintenance story and the ability to scale. Now, I say all that to say, if we're looking at the screens, the uh, vehicle screen, and this is the screen where we actually need to make this change. And because we're using the form component, the biggest question is gonna be, can it support what we're trying to do and how nasty or how crazy do we have to get with the formulas? So first things first, right off the bat, um, you have an example here of vehicles for a particular user and this user actually has a ton of vehicles, which is great because now we have a few test cases to work with. The biggest thing that we would have to do is to, to make a distinction between the edit link versus the add link with the understanding that we're gonna use the same dialogue in the same form component. I'm not gonna spin up a, and you shouldn't either, right? Spin up a separate form component for edit and a separate form component for add. That's just silliness because the difference between the two is one or two settings. So, you know, from a maintenance perspective, I got one form to handle both scenarios. And if you're generating power apps out of the box, that's what you get. So how do we make this work? So the first thing I want to do when I click on edit and, and I can, if you'll allow me to select it, select the edit button. So on this edit button, what the first thing I want to do is make a distinction that to tell the, the next, the form or the next screen we go to, or the next experience we go to that the user clicked edit versus add. So to do that, I'm going to just create a variable and let's just call this 
var, right? So I'm gonna do a var and it's gonna be a Boolean. So is adding vehicle, and that's shorthand for vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to false because they're clicking on the edit link. Now I can copy this and do the inverse. So I wanna do the inverse for the add, but understand that this whole square, sorry, this whole item and all the components within this item is being template generated. So we actually have logic within the item for the gallery that, that determines an edit view and layout and user experience versus an add view and layout and user experience. So this logic has to get a little bit smarter in the sense that understanding if the current item in the collection is for editing or if the current item in the collection is flagged for adding. And now if I click on the image, I can go and remind myself, what do I look for to determine if the current item is for editing or versus adding? And it's gonna be this flag here. So on the, the item itself, we create a property and we set that to new. If it's a uh, item in the collection for add, adding a vehicle and or else it would default to false if it's an item in the collection for editing the vehicle. So with that said, what we can do is get smarter with our logic by using that flag. Okay, so you can notice that I have the is new flag, and if it's new, set the variable is adding to true, else set the, the variable is adding to false. Now, because this is a Boolean and I'm setting my variable as a Boolean, I can actually simply write this in shorthand. So instead of explicitly setting the true or false Boolean value, I can use that same variable to do that for me, simplifying this whole formula statement, all right? So whatever the value is for this item, that's going to be my flag for my next screen. Okay, so now that I have my next screen set, what I need to do now is to update my form component with the needed logic for determining the item property for the form component. Now, and this is, this is, I think this is where some people get tripped up. One, because they want more control over the layout, which is why they do not use the form component. And we kind of demystify that thought process because we can easily control the, the, the components of the layout or the layout of the form by the individual data cards. And when we need something that's not part of the data card, we add in a custom data card and add the needed components in there. So the layout is fine. The other piece would be not fully understanding the anatomy of the form component, right? So the anatomy of the form component, when I go to this item property, this is what gets set for the form component, meaning that all of these items that I'm adjusting, all of the fields that I'm manipulating the values for is in, is in relation to this particular item. Now, this is a very simple statement uh, to determine the item compared to what you may be used to with like the SharePoint integration dot selected item dot item or whatever that formula states. And this is where we actually need to modify the value based on the current state of the uh, the selected gallery item that was pushed to this dialog. Now, and this is where I need to use my logic. So if so, if my is adding vehicle is true then I'm okay with the defaults against that data source, meaning that create a new record. Else, if it's false, then I need to grab the selected gallery item of vehicles. And I simply do that by, let me rename my gallery. So I simply do that by selecting the vehicle, I'm sorry, selecting the selected item from the gallery. Okay. Now, usually when you're manipulating the different properties, you have to be 100% certain that the data values or the data types that you're returning are the same type for the various logic scenarios that you're pushing to it. And so in this scenario, 
the defaults is going to return a record for the client vehicle's data source. And because the gallery is pulling data from the client vehicle data source, it selected would be the same record type. Understanding this is super important because this is what saves us tech, situations like this and techniques like this is what saves us from creating very nasty patch statements when it comes to saving this value, right? And it saves us from when we're working with the business user and they want to add another property or add another site column to this, to this form, we can do that without any modifications to, to this formula or, and, or any modifications to the save function. Again, a way much better maintenance story using the form component. Okay. So what's next? So now that we have that distinction made, the other thing is, and notice like as soon as we put that logic in, it automatically hydrated the default values for the various components for our simple types. Now we know that model color and dealership are lookup types and those we have to jump through a, a little, uh, some hoops to get, to get done, but it's not, it's not painfully terrible. Uh, and it's absolutely feasible. So for model color to get its default value, what we want to do is go to select the model color drop down component, not the data card, but the component. And for the default selected items, uh, plural, we want to grab our gallery for the selected item. And when I say the gallery and the selected item, that's the action that when we select, I'll show you here in a second. So let me finish this thought. So gallery selected item, model color, right? Because when we save this value using our simple save, right? We just do a submit form and then the name of the form, whatever values in here, it's just going to save that into that, um, that item. So for, for the uh, site column, sorry. Now for dealership, we want to do something similar. So again, so we select the drop down. Go to default selected and let's try the same technique. Now this is where we run into an issue and I may have to generate another vehicle. I'm going to have another video. I'm so tongue twisted today. I need to generate another vehicle, <laughs> another video on uh, wh what hoops we need to jump through to, to bring that the selected dealership information back. And on the surface, I have no idea why this is not coming back as all my other default values for this particular item. And I did some digging because I ran, you know, as I mentioned before, I run through these processes before shooting the video. So that way I, I know where the landmines are and I'm prepared to, to capture them. Uh, but if I look at, so I, I ran into this issue before now and I haven't had a chance to solve it before shooting this video. But if I look at the client list and then if I go to list settings, you would notice that out of all of these dealership, this is a different column type. It's a lookup type. And this is one, this is the area where power apps is progressing, right? It's still maturing to where, you know, it can support all of the different column types within SharePoint. But as of now we've seen gaps, right? So like with the image column type, with the location column type, now it seems like with the, the lookup column type, they're restricted where sometimes you can read the value, but you can't set the value. Or if you read the value, you know, can you use it and select it and so on and so forth. So this is one I, I and it could be as simple as I'm not passing it. Um, but let me dig deeper in the next video. Well, give me some time to dig deep and prep for the next video and then I'll give you the answer. But for now, I want to say we are good. Everything else is done. So let's test this and see if it actually works. Okay. So here we are. I did my published a SharePoint. I went through my 20,000 refreshes and now let's just go ahead and test this out. So here I have. Uh, a client selected. I still have my two options to edit an existing or add a new. If I click on edit, the cyber truck uh, model is automatically selected. The color is selected, the van for it is selected. So I get all my default values except for 
dealership. And we saw that, right? We saw we wanted to select gallery.selected.dealership and that property was not available for whatever reason. And I'll dig deep to try to understand that. So now let's just make sure this thing actually works. So I want to change, um, I'm going to change the year of this from 2021 to 2022 and then click save. And then you notice that the Cybertruck updated. So let's add a new vehicle. Cybertruck wasn't a great example. I wanted to like change the color and make sure that my colors change and all the other fun stuff. So here, let me just quickly add in another record. Okay. So let's just, again, let's just note what we're saving. And then that way, when we go to edit, just make sure the changes are there. So we have a white model three with a van year 2025 delivery date, 2022. Interesting. Um, Cincinnati dealership, Ashley. So it clicks save here. There's a white model three. We change the year to 2022, right? Because we're going to deliver it in 22. So how are you going to get a 25 model in 22 and then click save and you notice that the year changes, right? So in the same is true for modifying the VIN number. So let's just change this to, I typed in the VIN number, the incorrect number. So it should be 99. As you can see, those changes are modified, right? And we went through the process of adding a new, so that seems to work. So we still got some kinks to work out, right? So one of the few things that I noticed is that changing the color, this drop down doesn't work. Our dealership is not being saved. So in the next video, this, I will do a part two to this to kind of work out the kinks. But as you can see, because we have the right strategy, I can't stress this enough, having the right strategy and using the form component versus individual components to, to build our screen, we can easily toggle from editing an existing gallery item using a custom dialogue, adding an ex an, a new gallery item using a custom dialogue with the form component, with our save events. We were able to reuse a lot of the different components, a lot of the formulas, make a few tweaks here, make a distinction of when we're in the edit scenario versus the add scenario, tweak what we need to tweak accordingly, and we're able to rock and roll, okay? So again, this is a very simple form, but imagine if you had a multi-step form that has 20, 30, 40 fields, you don't want to be dealing with those patch statements needed to patch that scenario for an edit use case and patch that scenario for an ad use case and deal with those 30 and 40. And every time the, the, you run to a scenario where you have to add a field, it blows your entire layout out the window and you're counting pixels and you're using variables and you're using shadow components to pull that off. We want to avoid that. That's a horrible maintenance story. And unfortunately, that's one that's commonly used due to some of the trainings that are out there. So here we are. Hopefully this opens you up to a different way of doing it. We're going through practice of showing that the scenario for edit and add and even delete, we can reuse a lot of these components. We have jumped through a few hoops, right? I don't know what it's going to take to get this to work, but we'll know in the next video. With that, any questions, leave them in the comment section. Until then, I'll see you in the next video and take care.